So today we're going to be taking a look at another iconic Star Wars action figure comic pack from the time, and that is Darth Nil and Delia Blue from the Star Wars Legacy series. Another rare and expensive comic pack for whatever reason. Uh, <laughs> they are great action figures. I really love these, and it took me many years to track them down. Uh, if I recall correctly, I think these were an Entertainment Earth exclusive. They were one of the last packs to be released alongside... Uh, it was Jareel and the Mandalorian Roland Dyer, I think it was. His first name was Roland, that is. And uh, Yusei Nazard and Baron Soothier Phil, which I have that pack reviewed on the channel as well if you want to check that out. And this was also one of the packs that was released alongside those bunch. Uh, so, like I said, it's a great pack. It's a very unique set of Star Wars action figures. They almost don't look like something you see from Star Wars at all. And I will mention this as well. I actually recorded this video several months ago. <laughs> um, and unfortunately, the audio just didn't turn out well for that. At this point, I'm re-recording the video. But anyways, what I was saying. So, they don't look like action figures that you would see in Star Wars at all. The Lia Blue here looks like somebody you would see in Marvel, maybe like Guardians of the Galaxy for the instance. And Darth Nil here looks like uh, an Earl Kai from Lord of the Rings. And I wouldn't be surprised if uh, the inspiration between these, behind these two characters involves that. But anyways, like I said, one of the most iconic comic packs that was released at the time. Unfortunately, I don't have the package to show you. I actually did not get these together or buy it brand new. I got Darth Nil by himself loose on eBay around December of 2019. And I got Delia Blue, I believe it was summer of 18 is when I got her by herself. And um. I think going forward, that's probably going to be about the only way you can get these two. Sometimes you might be lucky to find the pack brand new on eBay, but the going rate for that is outrageous, I think. So I don't have the pack to show you, but what I can tell you is um, the comic book that this pack comes with. is the It has the picture of the ghost of Luke Skywalker on it. And I think that particular scene that's based off of is Kate Skywalker's having a vision or he's... In a time of crisis, and Luke Skywalker comes to speak with him, basically giving him that pep talk about need to defeat Darth Krayt and go on and save the galaxy. And, and these two characters, Darth Nil is a disciple of Darth Krayt, and uh, Delia Blue is the Kate Skywalker's girlfriend, basically, and the mechanic of their ship. There is an entire crew, which unfortunately... We did not get the full crew from the Legacy series in action figure form. Would be nice if Hasbro completed that someday, but at this point, I think it's a fat chance we will. But anyways, anyways, let's take a look at these action figures. We'll start with Darth Nil here. Probably the more sought after one of the pack. Like I said, he looks like an Urukai to me. Very interesting detailing. Really like that shoulder armor he has here. And I like his uh the breastplate he has as well. Interesting design. And he basically just has a stringy loincloth. Some interesting detailing in his gauntlets there. And on the back of his armor there as well, those not sure if those are meant to be spikes that are part of him or part of his armor or what. So in terms of the articulation, he does have the ball joint, the neck there. He's kind of restricted though because of this ponytail he has. And then with the spikes in the back of his armor here. Kind of keeps him looking down a little bit, so he can't really move him in a looking up position very well. And he does have hinged shoulders. An interesting uh, feature about this that we never really saw with Star Wars action figures until maybe in recent years is uh, his shoulder armor here is actually attached to his torso instead of his uh, 
shoulder there, which was really nice. Gives him more mobility. Then he has hinged elbows as well. And then he does have swivel wrists. Does have a swivel waist and swivel hips, hinged knees, and hinged ankles as well. Fortunately, I can't fit a stand on this action figure, which is really disappointing. I know it's kind of hard to see there with black boots, but uh, the hole is not drilled very well into this. And I know some people say, oh, just drill a little hole into this more and that way you can fit him. But with an action figure like this, as rare as he is, as expensive as he is, I don't think I really want to go into modifying him. It's good detailing his belt there. In terms of the accessories, he has a very unique lightsaber that we've never seen anything like this before. Basically, it's a staff. And one thing I do notice with the few times you see this action figure sold loose on eBay, you can take the lightsaber blade out, which came into the 2008-2009 time. Not something we saw very much anymore. But I do see a lot of people selling this with a broken blade. So something to be watchful of. Probably not the biggest deal for most people because you can just glue it on his staff there, but if you want your action figure complete and in good condition, something to keep an eye out on. But very nice staff. Something unique for Darth Nil. Like I said, he looks like an archive, but he also looks like something you see from D&D. But thankfully, he stands pretty good on his own, I would say. Even without a stand. Uh, next, let's take a look at Delia Blue. Really like this action figure as well. As she looks like somebody you would see in Marvel. As colorful as she is. Very nice detailing in her. Does look like she has that piece of jewelry around her neck there. In terms of the articulation, she does technically have a ball joint at the neck there, but obviously you can see her hair is uh, very restricting to that. Not really a big deal though. Uh, she does have hinged shoulders and hinged elbows, swivel wrists here, a swivel waist, then Hinge hips, or uh, not hinge hips, but swivel hips, then hinge knees, and hinged ankles as well. She stands mostly good on her own. She does have those high heel boots there. Looks good, but um, I would recommend putting a stand on her. And thankfully, a stand does work for her, unlike Darth Nil. In terms of accessory, she just comes with this. One blaster, which you can't, she does have a small holster here you can fit around. I still have the elastic band around mine, so I've never utilized it. And I don't plan on taking this off at least anytime soon, at least until the elastic band rots out, which is starting to look a little yellowed, I think. It's probably got a couple years to go. This wristband she has there look very, uh, Nice as well, like she has a purple jewel in it. And one of the ways I usually display Delia Blue here, I'll note this. I do have Kate Skywalker reviewed on the channel as well, if you want to check that out. I usually have it where 
just kind of wrapped around Cade here like this. Kind of an awkward position, but sometimes you can make it work. Something like that as well. I always thought it'd be interesting if they made a TV series or a movie or something about the Star Wars Legacy comic book or a graphic novel series. Unfortunately, I don't think we're ever going to see that. At this point but it would have been nice to see these two characters or all three characters actually in live action but just something to mess with so would i recommend this pack for your collection i would if you can find it for a good price like i said this is one of the most expensive packs i've ever seen out there um I've seen, I usually see Darth Nell go in the $100 to $200 range, and I see the Light of Blue go usually be in the $50 to $100 range. Between the two, the Light of Blue is definitely the cheaper one. Uh, and I bought the Light of Blue for $60 at the time, and I got uh, Darth Nell for, I think it was about $90, $95 loose. So not too bad of prices for given the circumstances for these it's outrageous prices that they are that much but given the circumstances of what they usually go for if you can find it for prices like that i think you're doing pretty good so other than the cost of it they are very nice action figures they're very unique they're not the usual doll colors that we see with a lot of action figures getting the line but these two both really stand out if you can put them in a collection of or a shelf of 100 action figures two of them definitely stand out uh, and of course if you have kate skywalker you have to get delia blue to go along with it can't have one without the other really and i think these are this is a pack that not there there's usually always at least one listed on ebay but it's not like you're gonna get pages upon pages of sellers selling these you might get a couple at a time so just something to keep an eye out for a while eventually you might see one that's for a good price i do sometimes see nail go for maybe like 70 dollars and delia blue for maybe 40. so it's just something where luck of the draw keep an eye out on it consistently and eventually you might find them both for a good price and maybe you can get them both for about 100 dollars if you're aggressive enough about it but with that being said, I would recommend them both for your collection if you can find them for a good price. They're unique characters to add to any collection, really. But anyways, that concludes this review. I hope you enjoyed it. Stay tuned for more reviews in the future. There will be plenty more to come. And if you have not already, please like the video and subscribe to the channel. Greatly appreciate it, and there will be lots more videos coming in the future as well. And check out that Instagram link in the description as well. More content on that will be coming soon. But anyways, thanks for watching.